Amen. I want you to know that we really are praying for you today. Uh, I hope you do. Every one of you notices and knows that there are people in this congregation praying for you today that have been praying for you leading up to this service, that people have um, continued to pray even as the service goes on for people such as you. Hey, we're actually talking about prayer today, and as we do, uh, I I thought, you know, I could share an opening illustration, and I could share a few words to kind of get the sermon started, but I thought, you know, there's a person in our congregation that we've been praying for for a little while, and um, he knows the value of prayer. He's seen the power of prayer. And I thought that we would get started by actually having my friend Johnny come share with you on how he's found the importance of prayer in his own life. Johnny, we'll give you this mic right here. And um, it's all you, man. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, First of all, I want to say congratulations and uh, just praise God for our three youth that were baptized today. Uh, We're going to continue to pray for you. We're just going to continue to pray that you grow in your uh in your life with christ and you continue to walk closer with him so sam asked me to talk about why prayer is important and honestly i I can't tell you why prayer is important to you but i can tell you why prayer is important to me whenever i first met sam whenever i first came to this church i was going down a bit of a dark path i was going through very hard times in my life some of you know about it some of you don't and i'm very open if you ever want to talk to me about what brought me to christ I was sitting right there in that chair, not, not the one you're in, right, ne- right next to you, <laughs> whenever I trusted Jesus Christ. And what led me to that was prayer. I had met with Sam several times. I had been in this audience several times. And I'd always thought about trusting Jesus. I'd always thought about becoming a child in Christ. But it wasn't until I prayed about it. I prayed with my father, my mother, my daughter, brother Sam. I even prayed with some of you. And when I stopped thinking about it, when I started praying, when I started reaching out to God to help me find my path, that day, right there in that chair, I had the most overwhelming feeling I could ever imagine. It was a more just shaking feeling than when my daughter was born. Then when I asked my wife to marry her, I can say that because she's not here right now. The feeling that I experienced was unlike any other, and I found found my way down that path thanks to prayer. I found my way to Jesus Christ thanks to prayer. So I can't tell you why prayer is important to you, but I can tell you that prayer is what brought me to Jesus and what saved me and what saved my family. And if any of you have had a single doubt in your mind that prayer and talking to the Lord can do incredible things, I welcome you to come talk to me. As somebody who has been lost and thought that there's no way a higher power could care about him, I have been redeemed. I've been born again and washed in the blood thanks to prayer and faith in Jesus. Thank you all. Hey, I want to ask you, as we, as we kind of transition to God's word, and, and we will pray in a moment, but th- does it ever blow your mind to, to meditate on the very real truth that the God of the universe, the, the creator of everything, the, the savior of all of humanity, actually listens when we pray? Do you ever think about that? Yet? When was the last time that you really considered that, that Jesus, when he died for our sins, I want you to catch this, and, and Johnny really, he kind of shared the gospel for us, but, but when, when Jesus died for our sins, I want you to know that he didn't die just to save you from hell, he, he saved you to himself. And, and now, through faith in him, you can actually have a relationship with the God of the universe, and part of having a relationship with anybody means that you get to talk to him. And also having a relationship with anybody means that you actually can listen when they speak. And they will communicate with you as well. Has it ever blown your mind? Or have you even thought about, let's just think about the last seven days. In the last seven days, have you thought about the fact that that I have an opportunity to have a relationship with God Almighty? And that when I pray, I don't have to just check off a list and, okay, I, I prayed in the morning. That was good. And, hey, I prayed for my meal, so now I can eat. Like... That, that I actually can talk to God, and I can enjoy fellowship with God. Have you thought about that recently? I, I was kind of thinking about it 
this week, you know, I was praying about some needs that we have as this church. And, uh, and I was kind of thinking about where we're at as a congregation. You know that we have some tremendous opportunities in front of us. Uh, I, I look in this congregation right now. We actually have a few people in the overflow room. And overflow room, I'm sorry for that. But um, we have a few people that are in there right now. And as you look in this congregation, you can kind of see we don't really have much room. You know, we don't have a whole lot of space. And in fact, the only space that we have right now is for just a typical Sunday where we don't have any type of outreach, where there's no holiday, anything like that. And then we, we again, we just start trying to figure it out. All right, let's put a TV in this room. Let's put a TV in that room. Let's try to make sure that people can fit in here. And, and I was praying really specifically about, about that building. You know, we're, we're really praying hard. And uh, we voted on moving forward with a building project. And, uh, and, and I thought, you know, that's the easy part. It's easy to vote and say yes, and now we have the hard part in front of us. We've got to raise $800,000 before we even lay ground, and then we've got to raise another $800,000 or so to get to that point. And I was praying about that, and to be honest, there are times where you think, oh man, we've got to get this thing done. We've got to, we've got to move forward, and I start kind of thinking about different ways that we can have that happen. And, uh, and then it popped in my head as I was praying, and I was thinking, how cool would it be if I was talking to one of you throughout the course of this week, and I actually think, I don't know why this popped in my head, but I was thinking of Kyle. And, uh, and I was thinking, I was talking to Kyle, and, and if Kyle looked at me and said, hey, Sam, and this is why you're going to know that I was talking to Kyle in this situation, because uh, I, I think that, that you may have some similarities here. But, um, but Kyle looked at me, and he, he said, hey, Sam, don't worry. I know Elon Musk. <laughs> you, you both like your sci-fi stuff. That's the only reason. I think that's the only personality thing. But uh. But he, if, if Kyle looked at me and said, hey, I know Elon Musk, uh, he's got it covered. Or, or if I was talking to him and he said, hey, I, I know Jeffrey Bezos, or, or you name your favorite billionaire. I think that's the only two I know of, but um, you may know of a few. But if, they, if, they, if somebody in this congregation said, I know a billionaire, and they're invested in ministry, they love the Lord, they want to help out, I think all of us would just breathe this sigh of relief. Oh, okay, it's going to be fine, right? Or let's just say that one of you were sick, and, uh, and I was talking to you, and you were saying, hey, man, I need to go see this doctor. There's only one specialist in the entire world that focuses on this one condition that I have, and I don't know how I'm ever going to get an appointment with him. And I just said, hey, oh, don't worry about it. I, I know that guy. I'll just call him right now, and I'll get you in. I think at that moment, you would just kind of say, oh, it's going to be okay. But then I thought about this, and I realized, we know God. We know God. What if, what if I started the service and said, hey, I was thinking about the building this week, and, and I talked to God about it? I think most of us would just kind of be unemotionless, or we'd be emotionless, right? We'd just, okay, cool. But again, when we think about the fact that we know a person, we tend to feel a little bit better. Why is that? You know, we're, we're talking about going deeper in our walk with the Lord in this series right now. And last week, we kind of talked about um, getting deep into God's Word. And I pray that this week you were doing that. I pray that you were, you were deep in His Word, you were enjoying His Word, you were experiencing fellowship with Him as you, you, you learned His Word, lived it, you loved it, you memorized it, meditated on it, made it known. That's what we talked about last week. I hope that was going on in your lives and in your families this week. But, but this week, we're talking about getting deeper in our relationship with God, specifically through the practice of prayer. And any time that you think about prayer today, I want you to think about it in two different ways. One, we're going to talk about it in a relational way. We're going to talk about it in a way that I get to experience a relationship with God. But this is the part that's kind of a challenge for some of us. We're also going to talk about it in, in regards to a discipline, a, a, a spiritual self-discipline. My pastor, when I was growing up, I'll never forget, he, he at one point, I, I think I asked him, I said, how do I know if I'm self-disciplined? He said, well, that's a really good question. And I said, well, specifically, how do I know that I have spiritual self-discipline? And he said, well, here's the question I would ask myself. Is there anything that you can think of that you're doing that you have to discipline yourself to do? I mean, think about that. Is there anything in your walk with God that you're having to constantly discipline yourself to do? And if so, that that means you're probably becoming self-discipline in your relationship with the Lord. But how about the practice of prayer? You know, I'm not talking about praying this morning in reference to, hey, I prayed because I ate some Cheetos. Uh, I'm not talking about praying today when we really need something, because I think all of us pray when we're desperate. But, but really, again, I'm talking about the discipline of prayer. And with that being said, as we get started, I want to bow our heads, I want to close our eyes, 
And I think it would be good if we just kind of disciplined ourselves together to take this time to pray. Here are a few things that I've been doing with my kids lately. Um, One, I've been saying as we start our prayers, and I'm just going to kind of give you a guide this morning. As we start our prayers with our kids, we say, God, here's one reason I praise you or one reason I love you. It's because you are, just fill in the blank real quick. God, I praise you or I love you because you are, fill in the blank. God, I'm thanking you today for fill in the blank. This is one reason I'm thanking you today. God, I'm sorry for this. Just lay it out before the Lord right now. I'm sorry for this. God, here's one friend I want to pray for, one other person that I want to pray for. Just give God their name. Here's my request for me or my family. Just share it with the Lord. Here's my request for me or my family. Lord, I know that not all of us are done praying. In fact, most of us probably still have a lot that we could say, but that's a good start. Lord, I pray that today, I pray that you'll speak to every one of us uh, about the importance of us speaking to you and also about the, the importance of us listening to you. Lord, I pray that we'll have good communication. And that, again, requires both. And Lord, I pray that as we think about it, I pray that we'll remember that doing so, talking to you is a, a means of a relationship, but I also pray that we'll remember that it's an opportunity Um, for us to discipline ourselves to be more and more like you and to become more and more holy and to align our hearts with your will. So I pray that that'll be the kind of people that we are. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, if you have your Bibles, if you would, turn them to Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18, that's where we're going to be today. Luke 18, you can kind of look on your screen right now. We're going to be in verse 2 to start off with. We're going to read all the way from 2 to verse 8. God's Word says this, Jesus is the one teaching. He said, in a certain city, there was a judge who did not fear God, and he did not respect man. So let me ask you as a congregation real quickly, did he sound like a good man or a bad man? He was a bad man. He was a bad man. All right, so he did not, he did not fear God. He did not respect man. Then there was a widow in the city, and she kept coming to him, saying, give me legal protection from my opponent. For a while he was unwilling, but afterward he said to himself, even though I do not fear God nor respect man, yet because this widow continues to bother me, I will give her legal protection. Otherwise, by continually coming, she will wear me out. Verse 6, and the Lord said, hear what the unrighteous judge said. Now will not God bring about justice for his elect who cry to him day and night? And will he delay long over them? I tell you that he will bring about justice for them quickly. Now, let's just stop there for a moment. You know, one of the reasons that Jesus talked in parables, or one of the reasons that Jesus taught through parables was, um, was because people connect with stories. You know, that's one of the reasons I like to tell stories about my life on Sunday mornings is because oftentimes we're not necessarily going to connect with a list of 10 things we shouldn't do, but we will often connect with somebody's story, their situation, because we often relate with it. And in this story, Jesus, he shares this, the, the, this situation with two different people. He says, one, there was a judge. This judge didn't fear God. He didn't respect the people. In other words, he wasn't a good man. He wasn't a good judge. You can't be a good judge if you don't care about justice, and God cares about justice. So you can't be a good judge if you don't care about justice, and you also can't be a good judge if you don't care about people, that they get justice. But the other person in this story is this widow who is in desperate need of help. Someone was taking advantage of her, and that was really common in that culture. That was something that kind of happened to women in general, but specifically to women who didn't have a a man in their life. It was really hard to live as a woman in that day and age. So she asked for help day after day. She kept coming to him, and he said, no, I don't have time for you. No, I don't have time for you. Do you know why he probably didn't have time for her? It's because she probably didn't have money. So the guy was calloused, and he realized that this wasn't worth his time because he wanted to make as much money as he could. And for a while, he just didn't do anything. Hey, let those people take advantage of you. Who cares? It's fine. I've got other things to worry about. But eventually, she just kept coming to him. And I imagine it was probably on the way to work. He's walking to work. He's trying to take care of different people's affairs. And she's just following him. Hey, please help me out. Please help me out. I need some help. I need some relief. I need this. I need that. I need this. I need that. He got tired of walking to work, hearing that all day, every day. So even though he was callous towards people, even though he didn't care much for God at all, what did the man do? He said, finally... If you will just 
stay out of my hair. I'll do what you ask me to do. And Jesus said this, if an unrighteous judge took care of some random lady's requests because she wouldn't quit asking for help, wouldn't you expect that God would do the same for us? That's the question. Wouldn't you expect that God, your Father in heaven, when he hears you make requests before him, wouldn't you expect that he would actually listen? And wouldn't you think that if he cares about us, that he would have some level of compassion? You know, we're not really going to pick this parable apart because parables weren't intended to be picked apart. Really, there were to be a story with a really simple spiritual message. And what what was the message behind this? What's Jesus trying to convey to his people in this parable right here? Well, it's found in verse one. I want you to look at this. God's word says this. Now he was telling them a parable to show them that at all times they ought to pray and not to lose heart. Did you catch that? If you hear nothing else that I say today, here's what I want to encourage you to do. Pray all the time and don't lose heart. In other words, don't quit praying. Pray all the time and don't quit praying. So if you heard that, I, y'all know that I love to do this. If you're a visitor here, I'm sorry, but uh, we do this all the time. I want you to look at a neighbor real quickly. And I want you to encourage that neighbor right now with, with energy. We do this with energy, right? Tell them, pray all the time. All right, I heard Miles and about three others. All right, so we're going to do that again. Look at somebody and tell them, pray all the time. And don't quit praying. All right, that was a little bit better. All right, so let's focus on that first one for a little while. Pray all the time. You know, I I hate to admit this, but, you know, this is the time of year. Spring is right before graduation happens. It's when our kids are playing t-ball. Some of them are playing softball. We've got things that we kind of help out with at school from time to time. We've got ministry events. This is the time of year where we, we literally have something going on five to six nights a week every single week this time of year. And I see y'all are nodding, y'all are amening that because we, we, we can relate, right? And this is a time of year where I, as much as I hate to say this, I have to discipline myself to have a conversation with my wife. Like I actually have to remind myself throughout the course of the day, hey, talk to that person that you love more than anyone else in the world. And, and, and you know, scripture talks about that in reference to our relationship with God. I love the way that Paul said it in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 11. He's speaking of prayer, and some of your versions may say this. He says, strive with me in this thing called prayer, or, or labor with me in this thing called prayer. Uh, I think I've mentioned before, I'm so thankful that God made me a man, and that I don't have to go through that thing called labor. Like, I'm so thrilled that I don't even have to, you know, I don't even have to touch that. I don't have to worry about that at all. And, uh, you know, they're they're machines. I think we've talked about this before, where if men wanted to, they could kind of hook themselves up and feel what a woman would feel like when she goes through labor. I'll tell you, I'm perfectly content not knowing. I'm good with just patting my wife on the back and saying, thanks for your sacrifice. Like, that's, that's good with me. But, you know, anytime that we think about labor... Um, we see that the, the, the idea of labor has always implied some kind of work. I don't mind work, but it, also, it often involves pain. You know, there's often difficulty involved in something that you labor towards. And, and right here, Paul says, hey, I want you to work. And sometimes you may, even, you may even shed tears in this thing called prayer. You may experience heartache as you pray. There may be times where you're saying, why in the world am I praying right now? I feel like I'm praying to a wall. God said no to the last 12 things I asked for. God, God doesn't seem like he hears or cares about anything that I'm saying right now. Why in the world would I keep on praying? Well, because one, God says, keep on praying. That's one reason we pray is because God says to And this is where we see that it's a discipline to have an active prayer life. It's a discipline to have an active prayer life. It actually takes effort to pray often. Because as we search scriptures, I don't think that God's ever going to be content. I want you to catch this. I don't think God's ever going to be pleased with a relationship where what we do is we just pray before we eat cereal every morning. I don't think that God's really, really excited about that. I don't think he gets excited about us just reciting some prayer right before bed. No, again, he, he saved us so that we can know him and so that he can know us. He wants to grow in that fellowship. He wants to grow in that relationship. In fact, in scripture, we, we see that, that, that prayer should be a means of drawing near to the heart of God. It's a means by which we can actually, again, experience 
And I want you to catch that word. Experience our creator. Experience a relationship with him. And any relationship that you experienced in life or have or are experiencing in life is not one that you're just kind of, I don't think any of us are gratified with a relationship where we act like robots. And we just kind of, we, we tell our spouse, hey, look, at noon every day, I will shoot you a text message and I'll tell you that my day is going well and I'll see how your day is going as well. Yeah, you know, that's, that's not a good relationship. Now, obviously, there may be times where we talk to our spouse and there may be times where we're busy at work, but we all know that when our spouse needs us, we're there for them, right? And when our kids need, need us, now, I, I always accuse my mom of never answering our phone calls, but if we really actually need her, she's there for us, Right? And in the same way, God says, hey, I'm here for you. Just, just call me anytime. Just talk to me anytime. And that's the kind of relationship that we see Paul talking about in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16 through 18, where he says, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks. You want to know God's will for your life? This is what Paul says it is. He says, this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus, to just keep praying and to keep praying and to keep praying some more. Does that mean that a person never stops talking to God? To pray without ceasing, does that mean that you never, ever stop talking to God? Quit, talk, quit listening to me, and you just talk to God during this whole hour, and then at work, don't even focus on work, you just talk to God the whole time. Is that what Paul's saying? Well, in, in a sense, yeah, we shouldn't ever stop talking to God, but in a sense, he also recognizes we can't talk to anybody 24 hours a day. I think what Paul's saying right here is that we need to have an attitude of prayer that should con consistently describe our lives. There should be this constant posture of, I'm listening to you, I'm available if you have anything to say, and I'm not going to hang up the phone. I'm ready to talk to you at any time. I, I, I love watching my kids. Do any of you FaceTime? Yeah, I think most of us do, right? But have you ever watched your kids try to FaceTime? My my. my my siblings live about eight hours from here right now. And um, my kids, when they FaceTime their cousins, they'll, they'll set it up. You know, they'll, they'll line it out with them. I guess they use Kim's phone and call them and ask. But they'll say, hey, look, I'm supposed to FaceTime my cousin at 9 o'clock on Saturday morning. I need your phone. And then I give it to them. And if we let them, they would stay on that phone till 9 o'clock that night. I mean, just constantly talking to their cousins. But the funny thing about watching their conversations is that they only talk in spurts. You know, they'll be on the phone for hours and hours and hours, but they'll just kind of randomly say something every once in a while, and then their, their cousin will randomly say something back. And, and although they may not be talking throughout the course of that conversation or throughout, throughout the course of that time together, there's this constant awareness that there's somebody else on the other line. And I need to constantly be listening because there may be a point that they say something important. And, and there's, there's this constant awareness that if I need to say something important, I can say it because they're listening to me. And I think that that's what God's saying when he says, pray without ceasing. Every single morning when you get up, you make that phone call. And you tell God, hey, look, I just want to let you know, God, I'm all yours today. And I'm not hanging up this phone. I guarantee you I'm not hanging up this phone. I'm available. You speak to me when you want to speak. I want to talk to you when I have any issue come up. I'm going to be thankful to you. I'm going to be in communication with you all day long. I want to just be aware in every moment that Jesus is in the room. Think about that. I want to be aware in every single moment that I'm living that Jesus is in the room. And I want to be aware, and I want you to be aware that I'll be listening all day long. I'm ready for you, God. You just tell me what you need to tell me. See, we don't pray just to get what we want. No, it's not a bad thing to make our request before the Lord. But, but I want you to think about this. This is often how we think of prayer. We don't think about it like a FaceTime call. We kind of think about it almost like we've got a genie in a bottle that we've got to rub and ask for something, right? So I'll only ask, I'll only talk to God when I really, really need something. I'll talk to him if my life is really spiraling out of control. If, if I'm frustrated at work, I'll talk to God real quickly. Or, or if I just have a, something that I need to ask of, then I'll just, I'll talk to God. But that's the only time that I'm ever going to talk to God. If you had a relationship like that, and there was a person in your life that you did that to all the time, that you just asked and asked and asked some more. Do you know what that person would call you? They, they would probably call you a lot of things, right? But one thing that they would call you is a toxic relationship. They say that there's a problem with this thing because all you do is ask of me. See, again, we don't just pray to get what we want. Remember, we're talking about diving deeper this month. A shallow, a shallow faith focuses only on my needs in prayer. 
But a deep and a faithful Christian prays with the intent, again, of communicating with and connecting to the heart of God. So, I, again, I know that we're kind of just talking about the same thing again and again. We're talking about prayer. But I want to ask you, do you have a daily desire to connect with the heart of God? Do you have a longing to grow deeper in your relationship with Him? Are you seeking Him out on a daily basis? Here are three things I, I, I want to really encourage you to do. If you haven't taken this step of really seeking to connect with God, I want to encourage you to do some things. Some of this is going to be really simple, and you say, I do this every day. Some of this is going to be things that you say, man, I've never done this at all. And I'm going to give you some application, and in the same way, some of this stuff you do every day, some of this stuff you're going to say, man, I've never done it before. But the first thing I want to encourage you to do, if you're saying, man, I don't even know where to start with prayer, here's the first thing I'll tell you to do. Just start talking and tell God that you're talking to him. Just, God, I, I need you right now. I'm frustrated. God, I'm having a really good day. I just want to let you know I'm having a really good day. Just start talking to God. If you don't really know again where to start, you can do what I do with my kids. God, this is one reason I praise you today, because you are this. Or this is one reason I'm thanking you today. You have provided this. I thank you for this. God, this is one reason I'm sorry today. I just want to let you know this is why I'm sorry. God, this is one other person that I'm praying for today. Here's that person's name. This is their request. This is one reason I'm praying for me today. This is my request before you. Just start talking to God. Then here's another thing that you can do, and this is kind of a challenge for some of us. You can be silent before him. Now, I was actually going to talk about this, and I, I thought about doing it. I'm not going to because it's really awkward. But um, isn't it uncomfortable to just sit in silence nowadays? Like We constantly have some kind of noise going on in our lives, don't we? I mean, I, I, I know that for me personally, if I don't discipline myself throughout the course of the day, I will every time I get in the car, I'll put on music or I'll put on a podcast, generally a podcast, at every single moment, even when I walk into my house, I don't usually even watch the TV. I just turn it on to hear some background noise. There's got to be some kind of noise, some kind of movement happening around me or else I get uncomfortable. But what I want to encourage you to do is just take a little while and seek clarity and direction from God. Just get silent with the Lord and ask him to rid your mind of the world and the things of the world and ask him in that day to just fill you up. Just get silent and say, God, would you fill me up? remove the world from me and fill me with yourself. And then here's the next thing you can do. Just listen. Just, just listen to God. Don't expect to hear little angel voices or anything like that. Don't think that you're going to hear like Morgan Freeman's voice in the background or anything like that. I don't think that's how God talks to us or anything like that. But God is going to most likely speak to you through three different outlets in the course of your day. One, he will always speak to you through this one outlet. I want to tell you what it is. We talked about it all week. What is it? It's through his word. Every single time that you open this book, I want you to know that God is speaking. He's not always directly speaking to you. Sometimes he's speaking to Moses in the passage. Sometimes he may be speaking to Daniel. But there are times where he's speaking directly to you as a believer in Jesus Christ. And in those moments, I want you to write it down. I want to encourage you. This is what God's teaching me right now. And even when it's indirectly, if he's speaking to Moses, hey, this is what I'm learning. Uh, if you ever want to know the, the only unreliable, I mean, the only perfectly reliable, sorry about the only perfect reliable means by which you will know for a fact that God is speaking to you. You get in his word again and again. Here's another way that God speaks to you is through other believers. You know why this is so good? Like what's going on right here? Look around real quickly. We do this all the time. Look around. This is so good when we gather together as believers and when we get together in our Sunday school classes and we have a little fellowship meal or we do our life groups or anything like that, the reason it's so good that we gather together as believers and we actually meet in person is because as we meet together in person, we get to talk to other people who've had experiences with God that can share something with us. So they may say, hey, look, I remember when we dealt with this with our kids, this is something that God taught me in that time. Or man, I remember that temptation that I dealt with at school, and this is how I overcame it. You know, we, we're able to rub shoulders with other believers and say, hey, this is how God taught me. Let me share it with you. It really helped my life greatly. That's one way that God speaks to us is through other believers. And another way that God speaks to us is through his spirit. See, God most likely speaks to you in the quietness of your own thoughts as you pray for directions, there are going to be times where you get what you want or you want something. And uh, there may be times where God says, hey, danger, watch out. Don't do it. 
You need to pay attention to those moments. Don't ignore those signs. There may be times where you're talking to God, and as you're talking to him, as you get silent before him, he lays on your heart. Go check on that person. Go check on that person. Make sure they're doing okay. Can I tell you this? There has never been a time where I've obeyed that still small voice in my heart that said to go check on a person where they didn't need it. There's never been a single moment where they said, hey, why are you calling me? Why did you just show up at my doorstep? Every single time I've ever talked to somebody and said, God put you on my heart. Generally speaking, what happens is they break down. Man, I really needed that right now. But there are other times where they say, hey, look, this was just perfect. This is just absolutely perfect. They may not cry, but they're thankful and saying, hey, this is something I really needed. So talk to God. Get silent before him. Let him fill you up and then listen to him every single day. I want to give you, again, a a couple applications, a couple things that you can do to enhance your prayer life. First thing that you can do is this. I want you to find a specific time every day that you want to dedicate to prayer. Just just think about that. Again, not a meal time or anything like that, but we see Daniel in Daniel chapter 6, verse 10. He always prayed to God three times every day. Remember, that's what got him arrested at one point. He wasn't supposed to be doing it, but he said, you know what? I made this commitment to God. I'm just going to keep doing it. If I get in trouble, so be it. But find, find a certain time or certain times in the course of the day and dedicate them to the Lord. And if you struggle to, to kind of meet those commitments, here's one thing I encourage you to do. This is one thing I, I've done much of my adult life. Set an alarm. I got a text message as I said that. Set an alarm. I thought the alarm was about to go off. But um, set an alarm on your phone. And, uh, and if it goes off and you're busy at work, here's what you can do. Push the snooze button. And push it again and again and again until you have a moment in that day and just get quiet and talk to God. Here's another thing you can do. Find yourself a prayer partner. I think, it's just, just really, we're talking again about how good it is for us to gather together. How many of you have a prayer partner in this room right now? I guarantee you, if you get one, if you find somebody you trust and that you admire that, that's walking with the Lord and you say, hey, I'm going to start praying for you. I want you to start praying for me. And then you communicate it about how you're praying for one another. I guarantee you it's going to enhance your walk with the Lord. And I guarantee you it's going to enhance your prayer life. So find a prayer partner. Here's another thing you can do. Track your prayer requests. This is so tremendous. It's kind of like in the Old Testament when God would dry up the Jordan River. He'd say, hey, set up these memorial stones and don't forget that I did a miracle that day. That's what tracking our prayers are. You write down all your requests before the Lord and you pray about them every single day. And as God answers those prayers, cross them off the list. There's a guy that I was praying for for a year and a half for him to trust Jesus to be his savior. And guess what? About a month ago he did And I was so excited when I got to take him off my phone. Every single day, I think it was at 1230, I had an alarm that said, pray for this person. And I was so excited that God answered my prayer and I was able to move on to another request. Keep track of of your prayers and you'll see that God answers. You'll see it often. Here's another thing that you can do. Pray for lost people. Speaking of that, share the gospel with people and then pray for those lost people in your lives. And then here's the last thing that you can do really, really simply. If none of this is working, you've tried all this stuff before, here's what I encourage you to do. Pray and ask God to help you pray. Like as simple as that, pray and ask God to help you pray. You know, I started this service with something. I want to end this service with the same thing. I I hope you know that people pray for you every week. You know, we have people in our congregation that, that are dedicated prayer warriors. And I'm so encouraged when I get to know people like that. People that, are, that will come to me all the time and say, man, I pray for you every single day. People that have come to me before and said, you know, when we send out our little requests um, for somebody's needs, they'll tell me, I've been praying for them every single day. We've got people in our congregation that pray for you. But, but I want you to know something else. And, and I don't say this to pat myself on, this back, uh, on the back. I, I say it only to let you know that there are people truly praying for you. Every single Sunday morning, I want you to know that the first thing I do as I'm unlocking the buildings is I walk through this room, and I know there's no power in my hand or anything like that, but I touch every single chair. It just kind of gets me thinking of people that may be sitting here. And in that time, I pray for every single person that may show up. And I want you to know in the back, I prayed for you as well. I went to those chairs too. But um, I go through every single one of these, these chairs, and, um, and I have different people that say that they do that for our congregation. They just kind of go through the list and they say, hey, I want to pray for so-and-so. He sits on the front row. And this guy, he usually sits on the second row. And they just kind of go through the list of people that they're praying for, even people that they don't know. 
oh, I'm praying for that, that bald guy that has a mustache, and I'm praying for this, this lady that looks like this or whatever. I can say it about a guy. I'm not going to describe any of the ladies. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm praying for these people right here. You know, there are people that are saying they do that for people in our congregation. But uh, this was so cool. This was one of the joys of my, my entire life as a pastor. Like two or three weeks ago, Kim went out of town. And as I was doing my morning routine on Sunday morning, um, I had Titus with me. And, and he's, he just turned five. And again, we're trying to teach him how to pray. And he had to show up to church way earlier than he wanted to. He is not at all our morning kid. And uh, he wasn't really happy at first when I woke him up. And he kind of finally started waking up. And I was coming in here, and I started praying for people. And I'm walking through all the aisles, and I'm touching all the chairs. And Titus said, hey, what are you doing? And I said, I'm praying for all the people that are going to sit in all these chairs. And I remember Titus, he, he looked at me, and he smiled. And he started walking through, and he was touching all the chairs. And I said, Titus, what are you doing? He said, I'm praying for him too. I want you to know that there are people in this congregation that are praying for you. They may be five. They may be 35. They may be 105. But there are people in this congregation praying for you. And I also want you to know this. God's word tells us that God the Son talks to God the Father on our behalf. Isn't that incredible to think that God the Son, even when, even when your pastor is busy that day and he didn't even think to pray for you that day, which I, I, I may not be able to say all of your names every single day. I want you to know this. God the Son, again, is mentioning you by name to God the Father. 1 John chapter 2, verse 1, God's word says this. My little children, I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. What's that saying right there? Again, we think about a court case. I talked about a judge earlier. We think about a court case. If, if, if heaven was set up as one great big court case, we'd have Satan that was constantly throwing accusations at us, constantly saying, you couldn't forgive them of that. There's no way you could save them. Send them to hell. Send them to hell. He's just yelling it out all the time. And then there's Jesus. And what is he saying? I covered them with my blood. They place their faith in me and they're forgiven. They're free. Forgive them. Hey, they're with me. They're with me. Let them go. Let them go. Hey, it's hey, it's going to be fine. Back off, Satan. Back off, Satan. I saved them of their sins. Isn't that incredible to think that God the Son talks to God the Father on your behalf? And again, one of the things that he talks to God the Father about on your behalf is your salvation. I'll tell you that every single person that has ever shown up at a church, I guarantee you this, maybe God will tell me I'm wrong in heaven one day, but I guarantee you every single person who has ever stepped foot into a church has somebody on this earth, not just in heaven, but on this earth, some, some little old Sunday school teacher that met you years ago that's been praying for you for years. Every single one has that one teacher that's been praying for him and said, man, I saw potential in that person. I'm going to pray and I'm going to pray. Or that cousin that prays for him and prays for him. You may never find out about it until you get to heaven, but I guarantee you, each of you have people praying for you right now. And I want to ask you right now, one of the things that we would see in Scripture that God desires for each of us, and I would think that God the Son talks to God the Father on your behalf for, is that you would trust Jesus to be your Savior. I want to ask you, have you done that? Because again, all this stuff that I talked about in this whole series, none of this stuff matters if you don't start with a relationship with God. You can't have a relationship with God if you haven't trusted his son Jesus to be your savior. So have you trusted Jesus to be your savior? I want you to bow your heads for a second. I want you to close your eyes. And I just want to ask you, have you received Jesus? Do you know for a fact, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that if you were to die today that you would have that you would be in heaven because you have trusted Jesus alone to be your Savior. If you're not sure of that, but you want to make sure of it today, would you just raise your hand? Just be honest. I'm not going to point you out. I promise I'm not going to embarrass you. Nothing like that. If you're not sure, but you want to make sure today, would you just raise your hand real high for me to see? I think I see a hand, and I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for that hand. Here's what I want to encourage you to do. If you're raising your hand, how about you start with a conversation with God? Why don't you tell him, God, I know I'm a sinner. God, I know that I need you right now. So I'm trusting in your son. I'll never be good enough to get myself to heaven. Just tell him that right now. But I know that Jesus' blood was. Tell him your trust in Jesus. Trusting that he died for you, that he rose again. And trusting that God will save you because of that faith. 
Why don't you thank him that he gave you everlasting life? Now, I know I saw a couple hands raised, but I want to ask you again to raise your hand. If that reflected your heart and you just prayed and you said, I trusted Jesus to be my Savior this morning, would you raise your hand high so that I know that you received a relationship with the God of the universe? Just raise it high. I see those hands. Praise God for those. I'd like to talk to you after this service. But I also want to ask you this. If you're a believer here and you're saying, man, I have needs. Man, I'm I'm sick right now or I'm hurting right now or I'm just struggling right now. or Man, my family's just kind of out of whack at the moment. I'm dealing with temptation that I never thought that I would deal with before. If you've got something that you, you would just say, hey, I need people to pray for me this morning. Would you just raise your hand and let me know? I'm not going to tell everybody. I see your hands. Just raise them high for me. What I want to do is I want to pray for you. God, thank you for these people that were honest. Thank you for the ones that said, I want to trust Jesus to be my Savior. I praise you for that. Lord, I pray that that they'll experience and and enjoy this relationship with you, not not just in heaven, but that they'll walk with you and they'll, they'll get deeper with you and that they'll seek you all their lives. And for those people that are saying, man, life's heavy for me right now. I'm sick. I'm tired. I'm distressed. I'm discouraged. Lord, I pray that um, as they come to you, as they're weary and heavy laden, I pray that you'll give them rest because your yoke is easy and your burden is light. And I pray that they'll, I pray that they'll go deeper as a congregation. We all will go deeper in our relationship with you specifically through the means of prayer. Thank you so much that we have access to you. We have an opportunity to know you and get to know you more. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.